that you got something, part two. So say it with me. I got something. And I'm going to use it. We know we've been predestined in victory. We've been predestined by God through Jesus in power. You are seated together with him now in heavenly places. And he's in a place of authority. You are seated together with him now in a place of authority. So you have Jesus within you if you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. And you're seeking first, not second, but you're seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Peace belongs to you. Just doing a little review for those of you that weren't here on Sunday. Just lift your hands if you say, hey, I wasn't there. I was at Bepside Baptist there. <laughs> well, most of you were here. Or you weren't at Pillowside Sanctuary. You know? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So freedom and liberty belongs to us. You are a threat to the enemy. You are a threat to him. Let's go to John 10.10. 10. So we have to know, and it's because of our relationship with God, that we have victory over all things. Amen? Amen. John 10.10 10 says that the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I come that you may have life, and that you may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. So because of Jesus, and when we become in relationship with Jesus, everything that he went to take um, in hell, we have. We're walking in that very authority, the authority that he, that Father God gave to Jesus. We have it right now. We have it right now. That authority that was given to him by Father God because he went and he died on the cross and he went and took the power from the enemy, he gave it to us. We have it right now. Do you, I mean, I was thinking about that all week. We have power right now. And because of that power, because of the authority, the enemy, of course, lost. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him, and because I'm in him, I have victory. And because I'm godly, the scripture says that you shall suffer persecution. Because you got something, he wants to take what you have. But you have to remember, in success, in tribulation, in pressure, you have to remember that you got something. So you won't lose your mind thinking it's your, your power, your charisma, your beauty, your networking. It's the power within you. Amen? Amen. And so we remember that the enemy is coming. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy two things. What was the number one thing for those who remember? Come on, shout it out. He's after number one, your relationship with God. Because with your relationship with God comes the blessing, comes the power. You can't forfeit the relationship and have the power and have the blessing and have the peace. Just like you quit a job. You can't quit a job and demand that you get the benefits of vision, medical, dental, and all of that. The relationship gives you access to all these things. Amen? So the enemy is after, number one, your relationship with God. Secondly, he's after what? Come on, this is good. Secondly, he's after the word. Because it says the word is living, it's powerful. When you speak the word of God, it reminds the enemy he has no power over you. And when you speak the word of God, the scripture says that God and his word are what? God and his word are what? You gonna, this is Wednesday night, we get to have a good time, right? So you can go home and remember everything. So God and his word are one. So when you speak his word, you're speaking power. You turn in the light on. You're pressing the ignite button. That fire that we were talking about. But if you don't speak the word, the enemy is looking at you like, what you got? How about I just, and you don't have confidence when you speak, when you speak because there's nothing in you. So we learned that the enemy attacks the soulish realm. 
He attacks the soul. So if we live in the soul, we live in the flesh, if we live in carnality, then we are weak. So we go have to go in the spiritual realm and live in the spiritual realm where God dwells, where the spirit of God dwells, where the word in a different, we are here, but we have a different realm that we can tap into. I mean, Star Trek and Matrix, they got nothing on us. And all of these, I mean, sh like crazy. I'm like, how did these directors come up with these imaginations? I mean, that's a gift from God. Some things they said 10 years ago, 20 years ago, we were like, that will never happen. Well, somebody's imagination made it happen. Imagine if we tap into the imagination that God given us for the kingdom of God. Amen. So our relationship with God guarantees our victory. Let's go to the new information. Go to John 10, 27. God impressed upon me to focus on this part right here. You, you'll get out early and you'll be happy about it because you've gotten fed and the, it's going to be good. It's good so far, right? You're like, yes, bring some more entree. It says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch, neither shall anyone snap them out of my hand. I want to focus on here, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. In order for the enemy not to steal, kill, and destroy, you have to hear and know the voice of God. Because you have to, the scripture says that the voice of the stranger, which is the stranger here, is the enemy that we will not follow. We will not hear. But you have to be able to differentiate between the voice of God and the voice of the enemy, the voice of your flesh. The voice of that carnal way. The voice of how you grew up. The voice of your past talking to you. That eternal dialogue. That insecurity that you have. You have to be able to differentiate and know. He says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them. There is this lady that I worked with. Um, she's a financial advisor. The place is like a, they have the whole floor. So I don't care where in, on the floor you are, when she laughs, we know who she is. <laughs> because she has such a unique, you ever met somebody with a unique laugh? They can be downstairs and we know, okay, that's such and such. Or your child, you know, they know your voice. They come, you might be silently saying something or I might come over don't understand nothing they just said but you understand everything they just said because you know your child's voice you kind of like interpreting all those tongues that they're talking because you know their voice that's how we have to get with father God we have to know when he's speaking not when the pizza is speaking or that movie that you just watched that puts something in your soul that's coming up. It says, my sheep hear my voice. That's a really powerful voice, a powerful thing to be able to recognize God's voice because the enemy won't be able to steal, kill, and destroy it because you got something. When you're able to recognize his voice, you will receive understanding. The Bible says that the enemy, he's the father of lies. He's the master of confusion. So you'll be able to tell the truth and a lie. You'll be able to say, okay, the voice of confusion, God would not confuse me. So that's the voice of the devil. Do you see what I'm saying? But sometimes we hear what we want to hear. We hear based on someone betraying us. So we think that's Oh, let me stay on track, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> so you have to know his voice. So we hear, we, let's go to Romans 10, 17. Thank you, Lord God. If you don't know his voice, 
that means that's an indicator that you haven't been spending time in the word, that you haven't been spending time in prayer, in time in meditation. Because the more you spend time with someone, the more you know their ways, the more you know, like Pastor said um, a few weeks ago, if somebody comes in and tells him that Dr. Deb says something, he'll be able to say, I know you a lie. Right? Because he knows, right? Same thing if we spend time in the Word of God, time in the, not only reading and studying the Word of God, the scripture says to study, to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly divided in the Word of truth. So you need to read and you need to study the Word of God so you will have something in you so you can know the voice of God. How the only difference in God speaking is that He speaks to us specific to us, but His voice is the same he's not gonna tell me a lie and tell you a truth right so it's just in the way he speaks to us me I see God speaks to me in pictures I, I have dreams it's always a scenario that's how I God speaks to me you might be different but you need to find how he speaks to you but the, his voice is the same to each of us because his voice is through his word amen are you holding on with me? Yes. Okay. Romans 10, 17 says, So faith cometh by what? Hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by what? Hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by what? Hearing. Faith cometh by what? Hearing. My sheep what? Hear. Ah. Let's say that again. So faith cometh by what? Hearing. Faith cometh by what? And what does the verse say? My sheep hear my voice. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you're, if you're in the word of God, you hear the word of God, you meditate, you murmur, you think of it, you will be able to hear God's voice. You see those two verses together? My sheep hear my voice. So faith cometh by hearing. Faith cometh by hearing. But you got to be hearing the right thing. You have to be hearing the right thing so you can make the right decision so you can respond to the enemy. So you can respond. Faith increases on purpose. You can't just, you know, the scripture says we go from faith to faith and glory to glory. That doesn't just, oops, happen. Your child doesn't, if you don't feed them, they're not going to grow. Right? We know that in the natural. I know that's a simplification of it, but really that's what it is. You grow because you on purpose decide, I am going to grow. You on purpose say, I'm going to eat of this food. I'm not going to focus because the enemy is going to bring every contrary opposing thought to you. Every God says that by his stripes you are healed. He's going to bring every contrary and opposing thought to by his stripes you are healed. He says, I wish above you prosper and be in good health. Even as your soul prospers, the enemy is going to bring every opposing and contrary thought to you. That God does not want you to prosper. It's everybody else's fault that you're not prospering. But if you hear the word, if you meditate on the word, you will be able to cancel that thought that he's bringing to you that's contrary and opposing. If you don't have anything within you to be able to resist the devil and he will flee from you. If you can't resist, he's going to stay right there. He's going to stay and torment you. He's going to stay and do whatever and you're going to be like, okay. Do you see that? You have to feed in order to grow. So you have to come against every contrary word. God is not going to dress you with warfare. You put on your warfare. The scripture says that put on the whole armor of God. We're going to go into that later. God is not going to come and he's like, okay, the clothes is right there. Everything you need to walk in victory, everything you need that the enemy doesn't steal, kill, and destroy. I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. I am the good shepherd means I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to cover you. But you need to put that. It's like you put on clothes. I see everybody has clothes on. Thank you, Jesus. So, <laughs> so 
That's the same. I'm try whatever simpler I can make it for you. Just like you get dressed, and I don't think you would dare come in here with no clothes on. We would have to cover you, not only with the blood of Jesus, but also with some clothing. But you have to put on the word. You have to put on the whole armor of God. You're not going to expect God to put it on for you. He said, I've given it to you. You have to choose to do it. The enemy is the only one that tries to force himself on you. God is a gentleman. He said, here you go. Choose. Choose this day. Faith comes here by you want to be strong. You want to be able to resist the enemy. Here is the word. Eat it. Isn't that good? God will not dress you in the weapons of warfare. You have to put it on. And you have to be able to punish every thought. Punish every contrary word. Say, you're not going to steal my peace. I have peace. You know you can, how many of you know, you don't have to raise your hand, but how many of you know or have experienced, like, it seems like, everything is going wrong it seems like everything is not right or every challenge is coming up and you just had a peace how many of you have just lift your hands if you've had experienced that before praise the lord hallelujah where the situation hasn't changed but you can have peace in the midst of it you can have like and you like this is supernatural <laughs> right isn't that a show on the TBN? Yeah, it's supernatural. That didn't just happen, though. That's something that you have been doing, the, the, you spending time with God to tap into that. That didn't just happen. Somebody could be covering you, of course, but you have to add your faith. You have to agree in order to receive that. But what the enemy will do is in the midst of it, you having peace, somebody will try and say, um, girl, you ain't worried. you like, no, I'm good. What are you, and it, they don't have to say anything. They could just look at you like, that side eye like, are you sure you okay? I mean, really, if it was me, but it's not. But if, the per if you have continuation of that all the time, you might go home and say, you know, should I be worried? Maybe I should be worried. So you start getting away from the peace that you have instead of as soon as that person comes to you, you say, mm, I resist that in the name of Jesus. You're not resisting them, but you say, no, I am at peace. I'm going to keep my peace. I got something and that's peace. I got victory over the devil and I'm going to keep it. I have, you know what? I'm changed. I turned 180 away from sin and from everything contrary to God. And I'm not going to let no fine looking man come and take that away from me because I got something a free gift do you see what I'm saying whatever it is yep 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 believe me you heard my single life story this man I say you are fine praise the Lord God has done good God really did good but I said but you no 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 not meant to be because you have to know the voice. You have to know the voice of God. It goes for everything. God will tell you if that person is not for you. God will tell you there's a red flag there that you're not paying attention to. But if you are all in the flesh, listening to the voice of the flesh, listening to society saying you should be married by now, listening to your grandmother, I need a baby, uh, you know, so I can have a grandbaby, listening to your coworkers, you don't have a date this weekend? What have those voices, instead of listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit telling you, mm-mm, he ain't the one. He ain't the one. He ain't the one. Listen to me. I never publicly said that I could be married right now. This past year. But God say, and on paper, perfecto. Perfecto. Outside perfecto. <laughs> 
But there was something that the Holy Spirit revealed that I could not get past. And I can't listen to, you know, whether or not you guys have, I, I don't, you never told me, so I can't assume. Oh, isn't Lynn, why is she still single? Why is, you know, just so I can say on Facebook, change status to in a relationship. <laughs> y'all know y'all do that. I'm, I'm serious. I'm trying to use every example because we listen. These are the things that the enemy will use to steal, kill, and destroy. And you're so busy after these things that you're not, your relationship with God is nowhere to be found because you're so busy trying to get a relationship with someone else. Until you have your relationship with God intact and it stays intact, you, uh, you know, praise the Lord, you figure the rest out. Hallelujah. Amen. We must hear and follow. Hear and follow. Not only hear, we must follow. Because how many of you come here and you hear the word of God, and you know, a pastor always preaches a good word, and whoever he has here always preaches a good word, but you have to follow. You have to follow it. But if you allow the enemy to come and steal it after you get it, you won't be able to follow. The Bible says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will what? So you must not only follow, you must hear the voice of God. Not the voice of your past, not the voice of your neighbor, not the voice of your insecurities, pressures of life. Let's go to Psalms 89, 34. I said um, before, a lot of times we don't follow God's voice. We may hear what he's saying sometimes. We don't follow it because we lack confidence in the word of God or we lack confidence in God. We don't trust him and trust is based on relationship. You know, faith, you see, you know, is evidence. But trust, you said, regardless of if he does one more thing for me, he's already done the eternal thing for me. So trust in God is based on relationship, not on your circumstance, not on anything else. Psalm 89, 34, it says, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. My covenant, my word, he's saying here, I will not break it. God's word is good. And there's a note where it says, I, my word will not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish everything which I've sent it to do. It, shall it will not return to me void. God is saying when I send it to accomplish something, I am God. It's not going to come back to me empty. It's going to come back to me with the manifestation of what I asked it to go do. We have that inside of us because we have God inside of us. So when we speak his word, it cannot return void. Do you get that? Because God is saying my word will not return void. I will not break my word. But what happens... You have an experience of people breaking their word. And that's life. And it's going to happen again. Because, like we said, that flesh has not been redeemed yet. So we come toward God with that attitude of disbelief. Not because he hasn't done anything, but because of exp life experience. And we, we hear that voice of doubt and we allow it to influence our relationship with God, which is that steal, kill, and destroy. You, st you just have to, like in the women's fellowship, we had an icebreaker where Lynn um, Farrell had us to, you know, if you had a bad day, sh blow in the balloon. If you had been hurt by someone, sh blow in the balloon. If you, all these different things. And some people are like, hey, I need another balloon. <laughs> Oh, geez, one person I think said that. But um, you blew in the balloon, and then she told us, you know, then release it. Just release it and let it go. Don't try to pick that balloon back up. That's what happens when we put the word of God inside of us. We put the word, and God is like, you are free. You are loosed. You are healed. 
walk in that healing hold on to it but the enemy and opposing and people and things come with those opposing thoughts and you know pain in your body and financial pressure marital pressure and you go and you pick that thing back up but God said you know what I'll, I'll release you again let's try this again isn't that a merciful God Thank you, Jesus, for how many chances that he's given you? Hallelujah. Not too many. I mean, I know what you're saying, but as many as we need. Thank you. Until we are redeemed, we'll keep saying, Lord, I shouldn't have done that. Fire burn. Hallelujah. Burn that consuming fire. That's Dr. Deb's message. Praise the Lord. You know, it just sips right on, you know. Praise God. So you have to allow God to, you have to allow yourself to hear the voice of God. But you also have to resist the voice of the enemy. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 6. Thank you, Lord. God will not break his word. 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 If you're not following his voice, their doubt might exist. You might be paying attention to the darts that the enemies. You might be letting that thing dwell. For the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty in God, the pulling down of stronghold, casting down arguments. Read that with me. Casting down arguments. Say that again. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. This is how you got something. God's given you the power. He's given you his word, and because he's given you his word, you know you are approaching this knowing the weapons of my warfare is not carnal. This is a spiritual thing. I am against forces, the enemy. I know we, you know, it seems like when I first got saved, we, there was a lot more about being aware of these spiritual forces. But it seems like the culture now, people are not knowing there is a devil there is the enemy that wars and you have to live in the spirit of God you have to wage warfare but you have to know that it's not against flesh and blood you have to know that so you don't attack me and you don't attack your neighbor and because that will determine how you relate and how you respond if you think your enemy is Minister Jim, you will relate to him in the flesh. But if you know, you know what, that situation with him, you know what, it's more, it's a spirit behind it. Even if we disagree, you know when you disagree and when it's to another level where there's discord. That's, we can disagree, but they're not supposed to be this level of di division. You know, there's, there's a spirit behind that. And we both have to say, okay, either you walk away. That's then the natural thing. Just walk away. L let's table this for just a second. We need to both just walk away for a moment. Because you're still in the flesh, so you're not going to say, one, two, three, four, five. No, you need to walk away and do that. So until you have yourself in control, your flesh will still want to go and pop off at the mouth. Amen. So casting down arguments. Like we said, the enemy wants to bring contrary thoughts, contrary opposing thoughts. But what we have to do because we hear the voice of God and we want to keep it and follow his voice. Every opposing and contrary, you have to cast it down if he says that you have peace beyond your understanding and there comes an opposing thought to that you have to cast down that sadness cast out 
that heaviness in the name of Jesus. I thank God I'm walking in emotional stability. I thank you peace dwells in me. I think it's calm. I am calm. Hallelujah. Thank you that when you are weak, I am. You said I am strong. Amen. You have to take it captive. That opposing thought. That thing you watch on TV that reminds you of your situation. And before you know it, you have a whole movie made. Don't sit in there so long with that thing. You have to take and say, I come against that in the name of Jesus. You saw my, I am going to be debt free. Hallelujah. I am a good steward of my money. And then everybody come in and giving you an invitation saying, you ain't got to do all that. You ain't got to give all that. Say, I come against that in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Wealth and riches are in my house and I am not going to sabotage myself. Hallelujah. You have to come against it. Quick. Don't sit there with that thing. If you need to call someone to agree with you in that moment to get you out of that thought process, you do it. You do it. Say, 911, can you talk? I only did two minutes. I mean, that's what I do. If you have my cell phone and there's an emergency, you need to say 911. And believe me, I'll be like, shun, da 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 you have to take it captive. You're going down. You're going down. It's not going to work this time. It's not going to work this time. You're going down. You guys are not going to recover. Look at how he's talking to you. Look at how she's talking to you. She hugging that woman better than she's hugging you. They don't love you at that church. They don't want the best for you. They're just saying that. And you sit with that. If you sit with that, what is the result, right? That thing is going to eat you up. Nobody loves you. Nobody wants you. Look at you. You don't look good. Look at her. She looked good. You're not going to come back from that mistake. You're not going to recover. You get yourself, you got yourself into that. So you might as well be okay with paying for it. Mmm. The devil is a liar. So all these things and whatever it is for you, you don't just sit with that. You say, I got something. I got something for you. I got victory. And yes, he said that he will restore health unto me and heal me of all of my wounds. He said that he will bring back everything the canker worm had taken and the locust. Hallelujah. So I will recover just like he did with David. He came and everything was taken. And he said, do I go back and recover all? He said, yes, go and recover all. Ha. Ask me how I know. You got to have the scripture within yourself. You have to read it, but after a while, he has to come in here. When somebody press it, it just comes out the word. The word. You better know somebody who's lost everything. You better know somebody in the Bible that's lost everything. You better know somebody right in front of you that's lost everything. And say, you know what? Tell me about it and how you got out. And when you feel like giving up, just remember them. It said he cried all the tears he had where he could not cry no more. Have you been there? I've been there. But you got to get up and say, you know, I cast down that thought of giving up, that thought of quitting, that thought that I'm not going to recover. It might take me a minute, but I am going to recover. I'm going to come back, whether it's sin, whether it's financial stress, whatever it is. Ooh, because you got what? Hey, and that's power. And you have to be ready to punish all disobedience. We're talking about you tonight. Don't think about your neighbor. This is you. You have to punish every dialogue of disobedience within yourself. I'm not talking about with Minister Jim or with Kim. That inner dialogue that you're having with yourself. You, I look at myself in the mirror and I say, you go. You get that right in the name of Jesus. Since she's been talking about fire, I'm like, burn right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I cleanse my thought from every dead work in the name of Jesus. You, you know what? That is not right. You know that's not right, Lynn. Get that together. 
Because the devil can't come if and torment you if you don't repent. If you don't repent, he's going to torment you. Even after sometimes you repent, he tries to torment you. But at least you can say the blood of Jesus. And I always, listen. Hmm. Yep. Y'all better just fight. Don't let him bully you. Threaten you. You, you, you threaten him back with the word. Remember Jesus? Remember Jesus? Tell him you remember him. Jesus, Jesus. He took the keys from you. Why he would torment you. You're going to die. You're going to die. I said, and I could, I would not because the doctor said sometimes you might go to sleep and your was like lungs, oxygen was closing up. And for a couple of days, I stayed up because I was fearful to go to sleep. That's a demon. And I said, you know what? Nope. I am going to sleep. I said, you know what? Even if I die, just I believe I'm not. But even if I die, guess who I'm going to be with? So I'm going to take your power away. You know, sometimes you have to do that. Okay, you're threatened financial stress. They're going to come get your house. They're going to come get your car. You're giving this one your car, parking your car here, parking your car here. You know what? If they come get it, guess what? I'll get you. He gave me the first one. He'll give me another one. Stop letting him punk you out because you got something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. You better punish every contrary thought in yourself. I would ask you to survey your life and see. Because you know, I can look and look at your behavior and make some judgment. That's, but we are not to, uh, I'm only to inspect your fruit as according to the scripture. But we are not going to be like, oh, you're in, you're out. That's up to you and God. Look at your life. Look at the decisions that you made. Look at your time with God or your non-time with God. And that will tell you whose voice you're listening to. Either you're listening, if you're not in time with God, if you're not in the word, you're listening to the voice of your flesh. You're listening to the carnal ways you having that memory thing. You need that freshness with God all the time. Because he's continually. The Bible, when the last words in the Bible, God didn't stop talking. Right? God is still speaking. But you have to be in his presence in order for you to hear what he's saying. And the word is your foundation to know because he's always going to be in line with his word. So survey your life and say, where is this? What have I been doing? Am I listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit? Am I listening to the world? Am I getting caught up in how the world do things? Raising my family, my marriage, my job, social media. Am I getting caught up in all of that? Instead of the voice of the Holy Spirit, instead of wholeness, am I handling my relationships the way God would have it or the way I see someone else dealing with their relationship? If they're a picture of wholeness, then praise God. But we're supposed to do it the way God wants us, the way his voice, his voice is so gentle. He's so sweet. Even when you do wrong, he's not going to beat you upside your head. That's the enemy. Do you know that? You have to know that's his voice. The voice of the stranger. How do you protect the voice of God? Our last scripture and I'm done with you tonight. I'm sorry. That came out. <laughs> <laughs> That didn't come out the way I will. You know what I meant. Oh, Jesus. Y'all need to stop messing with me. I didn't mean that. Like, okay. Bye. <laughs> that 
that's not what I meant. Anyway, so living an unshakable life. No, I'm just, just listen. <laughs> living an unshakable life is one that's built on an unshakable word of God. Pastor says that all the time. I mean, he's, I don't know how long ago he said it, but I have it, you know, somewhere in my house I have it written. It, if you, to build an unshakable life, it's based, it's built on an unshakable word. And that word needs to be inside of you, not just staring at it, but it needs to translate from the Bible into you. From the Bible into you, so you'll be able to know and resist. How do you protect the word? Psalm 6, I'm sorry, Ephesians 6, 11 says, put on the whole armor of God that you will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principality, against powers and rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take on the whole armor of God that you will be, <laughs> that you will be able to withstand. All these scriptures that we read God is giving you a solution and a how to combat the enemy, right? He's giving us, because that's what I'm talking about. We got something. He's given us the answer. He's given us the weapon. Now we just have to use it. How, okay, you say, okay, God, I know your voice. I'm in your word. I'm in your word. I'm following your word. How do I protect that voice? You put on the whole armor of God. You don't just put it on. You know, like last week, you put it on every day. Every day I leave my house, I thank you, God, Father God, I thank you. I plead the blood of Jesus with my car and my vehicles. I thank you, angels. I acknowledge you because the Bible says that you hearken to the voice of the word. I release you right now for your assignment. You are hearing me and you are following what I have to say. I'm speaking God's word because you know what God said. I thank you. I plead the blood of Jesus for my mind. Like you said, I, I cleanse my conscience for every dead work, every dead sin. Because you're not going to just bombard me with negative things. Put on the word of God. Cover your mind in the name of Jesus. Cover your heart, said my heart. Because out of your heart, you speak. But you have to, what are you putting in there? So you survey your mouth, and if your mouth is poison, there's something you need to uproot and then put the word in. Amen? Amen. Protect your heart. Because out of it flow the issues of life. Hey, out of it flow the issues of life. So look at the issues and see, do I need to adjust what I have in my heart? Do I need heart surgery? Because if not, the enemy is going to torment you and torment you and torment you. But you have to rise up and say no more. You know that song? It says mercy said no. You have to rise up and say no. And it's not in your strength. It's in God's strength. It's in God's power because you have the power right. We started with right now. Right now, I don't care if you've been saved two days, one day, 10 days, 20 years. The person that's a one day saved has the same power as somebody that's 20 years saved. Hey! Our faith is because you have experience. Your faith level is different. But we all have the same power. If I speak the word of God, it's going to do the same thing if you speak the word of God. Amen. Amen. So take this word and go home and do something with what you got. Because you got something, right? Yeah. Now we have to go home and do something with what we have. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Have you received a good word tonight? Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for this word. It's drawing us just closer to you, Lord God. 
to be able to resist everything, hallelujah, that comes against us. I pray for everyone here. Lord God, that they will not allow, when they leave here, will not allow the enemy to come and steal that word. Hallelujah. They will protect it with all their might. Hallelujah. And you will give them revelation upon revelation of what more to do as far as them protecting themselves in your kingdom. We thank you for this, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. If you're here tonight and you've been, maybe someone invited you or maybe you've been coming and maybe you are a member of Lighthouse and you, you said, I don't know his voice because I don't, I'm not in relationship with him and being in relationship with him is the key to the victory. If you're here tonight, we want to give you, we're not going to assume that Wednesday night is all saved people. If you're here and you want to dedicate your life to the Lord, we want to give you an opportunity to do so. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day for you to take advantage of this free gift. You don't have to do anything but accept it. You don't have to be perfect. Just accept the gift and he will give you instruction how to change. So if you're here tonight and you said, yes, I would like to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. Just lift your hands and we will pray with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. He said he never leaves us, nor forsake us. Even in our sin, hallelujah, he sent the blood, the blood to come and cover you. Thank you, Lord God. If you're here and you said, well, to hear in this message, I, you know, I may have walked away from God. I may have had made some decision that caused me to disconnect and I want to reconnect with God. I want to reconnect our relationship. I want to reconcile with him. He's not left you. We want to give you an opportunity to do so. God said he's married to the backslider. Thank you, Lord God. If that is you, lift your hands and we will pray with you. Hallelujah. Amazing love. Love of God's love. Scripture says he's demonstrated his love toward us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. So it's his love. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. You're worthy, Lord Jesus. I don't see anyone. Oh, there's one. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Who's that hand? Okay. Do you wanna you wanna come forward? We can pray with you right here where you are. Actually, come forward. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 